Survivor Season 41, Episode 4, Recap Discussion, coming your way. Let's get to it. All right, if you haven't watched Episode 4 of Season 41 of Survivor, then turn, turn me off and then go watch the episode and then come right back so that we can talk about it a little bit because I got some opinions that you're going to want to hear. All right, so... Just to recap, last week, Brad, my pick to win it all, got voted out on the Green Tribe. So sad. And things are looking kind of bleak for Green and Yellow. They're down four, four to six. Blue Tribe still got a full tribe, six tribe members left. We start the episode and Jeannie, she's feeling like she's on the outs and she's gonna be the next one to go. Brad was her number one alliance. Meanwhile, Shan, Shan is a sneaky one. Shan climbed up the power rankings, pretty much made the call to vote out Brad, and she gives the extra vote back to JD. So she convinced JD to give it to him, to, to give it to her, and then he asked for it back and she did it. So I was like, hmm, Shan, that wasn't really all that smart. You had an extra advantage and now you're just giving it back. I don't know. Was it all worth it at the end? You could have easily targeted JD last tribal. But I did agree with JD though, because JD was calling out Shan for saying, wait, you knew all this stuff about how Brad had two extra advantages and that he didn't tell anyone else. Meanwhile, you flip out on me when I don't tell you about my thing. And Shan's like, oh yeah, but that was his news. That wasn't anything I was keeping from you. Well, it kind of was Shan because it's information that could have helped your alliance. So I, I was on the same side as JD. Shan was kind of running her mouth uh, a little bit about that. Kind of a, a double standard there. She's calling out JD for keeping stuff. But meanwhile, she's keeping stuff from JD. So you gotta, t you gotta take it, Shan, come on. You gotta take it. So about two minutes into the episode, we're already at a challenge. And I'm like, wait a second. This can't be an immunity challenge. And it wasn't. It was a reward challenge, which is the first one we've seen all season. And I feel like in the past few seasons, they just got rid of reward challenges altogether. So uh, it, it was a nice change of pace to actually see a reward challenge. The challenges are one of my favorite parts of episodes. So more challenges, more entertainment, uh, I think. And in this one, Heather, oh, my sweet Heather. Heather absolutely tanked this challenge where she had to throw up this coconut for it to roll down this platform and then she had to run through this jungle gym and then catch it. And she tried, she, she was throwing it up there, she was running, she was giving it everything she could, but just completely tanked the, the challenge for the Blue Tribe. Blue Tribe suffered their first loss of the season, and of course, it didn't matter because it was a reward. The, the Green Tribe got a wilderness expert to teach them how to live off the land, and the Yellow Tribe won a fish. So it really wasn't that big a deal that they lost, but the show made it a big deal because Heather broke down. She was crying. She was... She was feeling so bad that she lost the, the, the challenge for her team. And her team was really su supportive. They said, no worries, this is just a reward. It's not a big deal. It's fine. Cut yourself some slack. And they really, the producers, they really leaned into it. And they said, never give up, like 50 times in a row. It was just, never give up, Heather, yeah. You never gave up. You tried, Heather, yeah, you never gave up. Guess what you didn't do? You didn't give up. And I was like, all right, guys, like, she already feels bad for herself. Just you guys saying that on top of it. So there's got to be a point where she's like, this isn't really helping me. Let me just deal with this in time. But I appreciate the words, I guess. So uh, we finally actually got to see some screen time from Heather. I think it might have been her first confessional shortly after that. So uh, I I'd like to see some action from the Blue Tribe. It seems like they haven't been playing at all. So um, I'm here for it. So after reward, they cut to the Yellow Tribe and they show this like migration of the baby sea turtles going out to sea and it was just a cute moment like these little turtles they're like flapping all over and they're trying to get to the 
the sea. That was that was probably my favorite part of the episode. That these turtles, they were just like, yeah. They just took away. I'm so glad that they included that. Sometimes this show can get just so bogged down in the challenges, in the drama, in the the gameplay that it's nice to see some actual elements of the show. Like that. That's a really cool moment like n not many people get to see like a migration of the turtles like that so it was a really cool moment uh we go to the green tribe and the the wilderness experts there and he's climbing the trees like he's spider-man and, and doing like <laughs> showing off some tricks sliding down the tree he like karate chops a coconut and he's <laughs> It was just awesome. Like, I'm so glad that they showed these two moments, even though they were a little short. Uh, just really glad that they showed them. Meanwhile, on the Blue Tribe, we did get a sneak peek into some strategy, which is pretty much like the first time we actually kind of seen some strategy uh, from the Blue Tribe. Uh, and Erica, she is coming out of her shell and she's just like, we need to get out Sydney. So she goes to Deshaun and is like, we need to get out Sydney. And Deshaun's like, I don't trust you. I just I trust Sydney more than Erica. Like Erica, she's coming on too strong, too early, too strong, too early. It's so unnecessary. The team is dominant. They haven't even lost. You don't want to get complacent. However, you don't need to be making accusations after losing a reward challenge, especially after Heather just completely tanked a challenge like that. Like, if anything, you could place the blame on Heather for losing a challenge and go for the easy target of keep the tribe strong, which has not worked for anyone this season. But playing like a strategical move, when you think that way, your tribe mates are just gonna think of you as a bigger threat because they're saying they are actually thinking about the game more so than the easy vote. So now we gotta watch out for her. So now the blue tribe is saying, we gotta watch out for Erica. So Deshaun's thinking, we gotta throw the next immunity challenge because Erica, she's super sneaky. Like we can't keep her around. She, if she's willing to go for a strategic move and getting out Sydney, like who's to say that she's not gonna do that to one of us later on? So Deshaun's saying, we gotta throw this challenge. We gotta get out Erica, cut the, the head of the snake off before they can bite us. And I'm thinking to myself, first of all, you're making a huge assumption about Erica right now. She's on your tribe, she's coming to, she's confiding in you, Deshaun, to get someone else out. Like, wouldn't you take that as like, this person, I have this person in my pocket. Let's not get her out, let's, let's keep her along, let's string her along a little bit. Like she, I don't know, it just, if you're gonna go to the lengths of throwing a challenge just based on an assumption that Erica might be this type of player later on, it just doesn't work out for me. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you put yourself at risk like that for a big move? This isn't a big move, Deshaun. This is pre-merge. Nothing really matters pre-merge. You wanna align yourself nice and tight, sure. You wanna set yourself up, but the game really doesn't start until after the merge. Because Erica's not gonna be on the on the jury. I don't know, I just, I don't think you should be throwing immunity challenges. Flash forward, we go to the uh, immunity challenge and guess what? No one found the, the clue. No one even mentioned the clue. Xander is now voteless, still. Still voteless, dumbest beware advantage I've ever seen. Blue's not even looking for it. Brad had it and then they just got him out, so now, who, who's gonna find it on green and then they're gonna have to say the broccoli line? Sorry, I talked about this last time. It's stupid. Let's continue. The immunity challenge starts, they're swimming out and then it's revealed about, you know, 20 seconds in that Danny and Deshaun want to throw the challenge. And Danny was saying like, this goes against everything. I don't throw a challenge, I'm a football player. And he now he's throwing the challenge. So they wanna throw the challenge and vote out Erica. But it's so funny, this is so funny. The blue team is so good that with Deshaun and Danny actively working against their own team, they're still way ahead of the yellow and green tribe. It's just like, the other two tribes keep voting out their physical players that are good in challenges. You have Tiffany on the yellow tribe. I, I mean, it's just, I just hate how 
the players who I feel like aren't deserving to be there are still in the game at this point. To have something like a whole team, a whole tribe is willing to throw the challenge and they still win. Spoiler alert, the blue team, they end up winning it because Nasir is flexing so hard. Nasir is such a baller in this challenge. He takes those bricks and goes, ah, let's go, let's jump it, let's jump it. And then Deshaun, he's like tying up the, the bags of knots, trying to like make, he's doing everything he can. He's trying to find the key and toss it away. Eric and Deshaun, they're carrying this, this challenge. Nasir, Nasir kicks Deshaun out of the ring toss, immediately hits two in a row, and beats the Green Tribe, who, I, I mean, hey, you got rid of Brad last week. He was a good challenger, you know? I, I mean, I, I don't quite understand the logic, folks. Keep your strong players until you get to the merge, because if you don't and you keep losing tribals, then you're not going to be left in the game. All right, I'm not there, I'm on my couch. It's easy, I understand, let's continue. <laughs> Case in point, it was really funny to see the Blue Tribe actively try and lose this immunity challenge, and they still won, because the other two are so bad. It's just funny. Now at this point, Jeannie, she's gotta throw the dice, right? I mean, it's 3v1. She's on the outs, she's clearly out of the loop. JD at this point is trying to convince Jeannie that she's good so that she doesn't throw, roll the dice and he doesn't somehow get voted home. Meanwhile, Shan, Shan is the best player in the game, by far. By far the best player in the game. Here's what Shan does. She could have easily just sat by, you know, kind of played it mellow, risked it, but no, she's gonna proactively go out to JD Pretend that she's paranoid that JD's working with Jeannie and say, let me hold on to your extra vote so I can trust you. A second time. She already played this card. So she's going back again saying, JD, please, I need this or else we're going to vote for you. I need this to trust you. And JD is just like, yeah, no, you're right. I trust you. Here you go. Here's my extra vote. <laughs> what? JD. Oh, man, I love you, man. But like. This is the second time, what are you doing? Why? Stick to your vote, that's your advantage. You worked for that, don't just give it away. You have the power, take the power. You with that extra vote can now go with Jeannie and say, we have three votes, who do you wanna get out? Just vote with me, no, no biggie. And then now you have Jeannie in your pocket and you run this game. But JD, he was so focused on pleasing his alliance that he's submitting to their needs. This is Survivor, you gotta take control. Shan played him again. And that's why Shan is the best player in the game. I, I hope she wins. I'm a, I'm a firm Shan believer. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. She called herself, she, and now right before uh, Tribal Council, she's saying, you know, I have this extra advantage, uh, extra vote. What if we just vote out JD? and keep the vote. She's like, I don't wanna be the villain, but uh, I wanna be the assassin. You guys ready for this? Are you ready for this, ready? She's not the assassin, she's the assassin. Hashtag assassin. Let's get this trending. Hashtag assassin, yeah. Shan the assassin, I love it. We go into tribal and I'm fully expecting Jeannie to roll her dice. Um, she shouldn't trust JD, uh, I don't think, unless there were conversations not shown. She sure as heck shouldn't trust Shan or Ricard. She's never had that rapport. Her only chance at this point was to, you know, go with JD and maybe potentially do something. And she doesn't play it. And I'm like, what? Why aren't you playing this? You're dead. You're, you're in the water. Like, goodbye. You said you don't want to take home souvenirs and you're not playing it? Ah, Jeannie. Now, it ended up working in her favor. She, she made the right call, but she didn't really make the right call because Jeannie didn't play it on the assumption that JD was gonna vote for her. But no, no, there must've been a scene that we didn't see because G uh, Jeannie voted JD. 
Why would she vote JD if her only chance was for JD to vote with her? There must have been some conversations because why else would she vote for JD if she was going to work with him? So, yeah, I take it back. Jeannie, you made the right call. Stick to your dice. They made it seem like why wouldn't you roll it, but good on you. Now, scenes for next time on Survivor. Jeannie finds the beware advantage. Yay, Jeannie, woo woo. But guess what? I have a feeling, I, I'm calling it right now, Blue is not gonna find this beware advantage and they're gonna win another tribal, not tribal, immunity challenge, and yellow or green. So Jeannie's gonna be without a vote, Xander's gonna be without a vote, and then Stupid, stupid thing. I really, really, really just want to see someone from the Blue Tribe find this thing. Like, producers, just, like, give it to them. Like, put it right in the fire. Like, we're at a point where the tribes are so, the, the numbers are so low. Like, there's three on green. There's only three left on green, four on yellow. Like, that doesn't cause, that's, that's not entertaining tribals if you don't have a vote. Let them have their advantages. Give Jeannie the immunity. Give Xander the immunity. Tiffany, she's saying, look through his bag. Let's get him out. And now Danny's saying, yeah, I, I am a little worried that the females are outweighing the males at this point. I got to keep that in the back of my head here. Meanwhile, Sydney's like shown like women's alliance potentially. She didn't say it, but I think that's what they're alluding to. Big trend that I've noticed this season is women power. I mean, if you look at it right here, Abraham, Vochi, Brad, JD, four men voted out. Sarah is the only woman voted out at this point. And Evie is actively said, let's do a woman's alliance. Uh, there's two women on green, outnumbering Ricard, and it's split 3-3 three, three on blue. Uh, but it seems like they want to get out Xander on the Yellow Tribe. I'm all for a woman winning this season. It's been a long time since a woman won. It's got to be tough, though, when you're trying to play a strategical game and you get voted out just because you're not a certain gender. I don't know. It seems like Vochi was voted out because he wasn't part of the Women's Alliance. Um, and there's really nothing he can do to stop that. But if that's their strategy and they want to stick together, hey, more power to them because they got to a position in, the, in this game where they could form the Women's Alliance and take over. So uh, women are ruling this game. Uh, Shan is uh, my number one power ranking. Power rankings, here we go, right into power rankings. Shan, number one for sure. Evie's really dipped down. They really haven't shown much of Evie in a while. I think it's because Yellow really hasn't been featured much. She still did get a couple of confessionals at this point. So not enough to, to drop her out of the, the top three. Uh, and Heather, this episode was all about Heather. Um, I really don't think she uh, is really featured enough to make a strong enough opinion, but I picked her pre-show started, uh, so I think that she's gonna round it out in the top three. Game within the game, online. If you haven't done it, go do it. Pause me really quick because I'm gonna spoil the previews for next time. Beep. All right, welcome back. Uh, the game within the game, they're talking about how would you go through someone's bag to see if they had an advantage, or on the other side of it, if you had an advantage, would you keep it in your bag, or would you hide it somewhere, but risk potentially switching tribes or not finding it potentially? You know what, you wanna know what I would do? I would keep that advantage right in my trouser, not leaving my person, not now, not, ever. Uh, you always keep it on you. You bring it everywhere. You don't show anyone. You don't give it to anyone, JD. Uh, and you just keep it nice and safe in here. Now, would I go through someone else's bag? I mean, I might. I mean, but I, I think I've made it clear at this point. I would probably convince someone else to do the dirty work for me. Make it seem like it was their idea. Put the pressure on them 
and then just gain that information. Let them do the dirty work. Let me get the intel. Keep my hands dirty. Squeak clean. Not red-handed. Jacko-handed. All right, guys, that's episode four of season 41 of Survivor. Tune in next week for another episode. Uh, I'm hoping that Jeannie, uh, I'm rooting her, for her on the underdog uh, on the green tribe, but Shan, um, kudos to you. You're, you're running this game. So uh, let me see those idols. Blue team, find those idols. All right, let's see what happens next week. See you guys.